Saint Francis, Saint Bernadette, Saint Teresa of Lisieux, Mother Mary of the Cross MacKillop, Mother Teresa, Saint Augustine, Saint John Paul II, Saint Faustina, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Maximilian Kolbe. If I was to ask you who is your favourite saint, chances are you might name one of these saints each of whom we are inspired by because we know much about them, either from their own writings or from significant biographies about them. But there are also another group of saints who perhaps we don't know so much about, who we don't have maybe such a personal devotion to, but who are nonetheless incredibly significant for our Catholic faith. Think about St. Linus, St. Cletus, St. Clement, St. Lucy, St. Agatha, St. Felicity, St. Perpetua, St. Justin, Polycarp, and many, many more besides. We don't know much about these ancient saints, and what we do know is sometimes greatly exaggerated or embellished, but nonetheless they are foundational for our Catholic faith. Today is All Saints Day, so let's explore why these saints are so important to us. So let's go back and think about the very first generation of Christians. Who, the very first Christians, of course, had known Jesus. They had seen him die on the cross, and they had seen him alive again. They had come to experience him alive and risen. So they knew that Jesus had risen from the dead. But so what? What did that mean for them? Well, they and the next generation of Christians as well came to experience the Holy Spirit, the life of the risen Jesus at work in them, both in their own individual life but also as a community when they came together, so strongly that they consider themselves to be collectively the body of Christ. And the body of Christ was as much who they were together as what they received when they came together at Eucharist. But was that all there was? Had the life and death and resurrection of Jesus made a difference for them here on earth, but nothing more? Or was there perhaps actually an enduring effect of Jesus' uh, redemption that would live into eternity in the life of a believer. Remember in the time of Jesus, the question of whether there was life after death at all was still not settled. The Pharisees and many other Jews believed there was life after death. The Sadducees and others didn't. It was still a bit of a contested question. Of course, when Jesus rose from the dead, it became very clear that he had risen. But did that mean that we, as believers, would also rise from the dead? That there would be a life beyond our death? Well, Jesus, Jesus promised that. Significantly, in John's, in John's Gospel, we hear Jesus say, My Father's house has many rooms. After I go, I shall return to, to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. Jesus promised this. He promised eternal life in heaven with him. But how could the first Christians be sure? How could they know this was really true? It's very hard to experience something you, when you haven't been to heaven yourself yet. But something amazing happened when the first Christians began to be martyred for their faith. Uh, their, their fellow believers would go and gather at their tombs, as you and I would perhaps to lay flowers on a mother or grandmother's gravestone. But when the disciples and believers came together at the tombs of the martyrs, they experienced not death, but they experienced a palpable experience of life, a sense of the presence of God, and a confirming awareness that this person who had died was now with the Lord. In fact, so much so that when they prayed, they experienced miracles and healings in the, in the place where there had been death or the place where the, the saint had been buried. There were miracles being done, which became for them con confirmation, evidence, not proof, but evidence that the person who had died, the believer, was now in the presence of God, so much so that they could intercede directly with God for whatever favours they were asking. They were somehow going to be carried back to earth for the life of the believers. And so over time, this happened again and again, not just in one place, but the, the tombs of all the saints, and particularly the martyrs, became places of significant devotion. Remember, in the time there was still persecution, the Christians couldn't build big churches to gather in. Christians met either at home, privately, or they met together in, at the tombs of the saints. That's why the catacombs of Rome were so, so significant. And there, as they came together again and again, they experienced evidence of the, of the, the, the person who had died was indeed alive and alive with Christ. And so these early saints who I named, these saints who I named earlier, these early martyrs, it was not so much what they did in their life that became important, 
but the very fact of their death and their sharing in risen life with Jesus that became the evidence that, can, that proved what Jesus had said was true, that Jesus had promised we would share life with him, and those who had gone before were, live, were now resurrected living proof of this with Jesus. So the church has always, always found significance in all the saints. The more recent saints, we know much more about. We can be inspired by their teachings and writings. But these ancient saints who, in many ways, have just drifted into memory, we, we name them in lists of prayers and litanies and in, in the first Eucharistic prayer from time to time, but we don't know much about them. But they, serve, but they served a wonderful witness for the early generations of Christians who have since written into creeds and catechisms that what we now understand is our faith. In the Nicene Creed, written around 300 AD, we, 300 AD, we say, we believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. It had been so established, so, so convincing by that time that everyone believed it. Jesus' life, death and resurrection had made a difference for each and every believer who could experience Jesus' risen life with them here on earth, but also into eternal life in heaven. So many of us like going to saints for, uh, as companions in prayer, and that's a good thing we certainly can do. We don't need to do that. We can go personally to Jesus directly. Jesus came to earth so we can have a direct, immediate, personal relationship with him and through him and with him to the Father. We can do that directly. But we can invite the saints to be our companions in prayer if we wish. And whether we choose that or not, the, 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 the saints themselves are the living witness to us that we can have that same deep, personal, intimate relationship with Jesus that they had.